Perfect, perfect. So I'm assuming you guys are all now interested in restaking after uh, what Matt and Derek and the folks at BlockSwap have been chatting about. So I'm here to talk about uh, this idea of overloading market-driven consensus. Now, for context, um, I'm sure a lot of you have read that article that Vitalik posted recently about um, overriding or overloading Ethereum social consensus. And I'm here to talk about a potential alternative and how we can combine DeFi and DeFi primitives with more trust-minimized infrastructure to think about positive alignment for restaking to actually improve security uh, while also improving better economic outcomes for restakers and stakers alike. So these three words, security, decentralization, trustlessness, uh, the one thing that they have in common besides the fact that we all like to use them in talks is the fact that no one really pays for it. Um, and that has been shown time and time again. When we think about DeFi um, and when we think about the most performant protocols in the space, um, especially when it comes to volume, a lot of them do sacrifice on at least one of these three things. And the reason why is because at the end of the day, the most important thing for users is performance. And so some of you may be familiar with this. Um, Gasper is essentially the core kind of primitive that really runs the Ethereum consensus protocol. Um, it's short for two things, LMD Ghost and, and Casper, which is the finality gadget that, um, how, that essentially dictates how blocks are finalized. And then uh, secondly, uh, that determines essentially how the chain retains itself. The kind of core emphasis and why I bring this up here is because in effect, and in any proof of stake network, this idea of consensus is truly cr about creating um, game theoretical outcomes that are positive for users that are aligned with um, kind of the aims of the network, in this case, for finality and security. And I think it's, it's common that we often mistake or, or kind of divert away from the fact that at the end of the day, these are all markets that are optimized to serve a specific function. And our goal in kind of building these markets or building this infrastructure is to make sure those outcomes are aligned for its users. And so restaking, we see kind of steps outside of the bounds of what was currently or was initially drafted in the gas root paper um, to really change the dynamic between rewards and penalties and how they influence stakers. Cloud is one example. The original spec for cloud included validated correlated restaking, which is the idea of restaking directly and slashing directly from uh, the performance of Ethereum validators, while Eigenlayer was more tailored towards operator correlated restaking, which is the idea of more economic restaking and restaking via operator outside of Ethereum validators. And these two systems all have like their own rules and kind of outlines for how they'll influence how people kind of participate in restaking. And unfortunately, like this is just really going to be the beginning of these systems. And we're a little bit far behind when it comes to actually building economic primitives that align for positive outcomes for these. And that is why Vitalik really wrote this paper is because there are really two things that overload consensus. Exogenous dependencies from the core network, this idea of dependencies on other networks that could potentially slash you, and having those exogenous dependencies be actions that are secured by the validators or the value of the validators and the actions of the validators on Ethereum. And together, these create this idea of overloading consensus, this idea that if you know, something goes wrong on these exogenous dependencies, well, we're going to have to overrun this market, you know, the Gasper market, in order to be able to essentially facilitate consensus to the way the social layer wants it to. So the question then is, so how do we change this, right? If this is a system um, we see in the general, like, provider and LST market that there really are no primitives built to align restaking or focus on anything outside of price-based or, or liquidity-based risk underwriting, how does this change? Um, and right now, that current paradigm is diluted into a simple thing. Trustless infrastructure and building better validator infrastructure doesn't mean we can make more money or build better lending protocols or better DEXs and so on and so forth. And in order to change this, and this is what we're going to have to change, we need to look towards a future where we build two things. One is more validator native mechanism design in DeFi protocols. And the second is more trustless validator and middleware products and kind of middle middleware that interact, interact between middleware and validators. <clears throat> 
Um, so to go a little bit more into like, okay, what does this actually mean? What are some of the things that realistically we could build here? Um, if we dive into validator native mechanism design, uh, the two that kind of I want to highlight is one. Um, is one, validator credit risk underwriting. If we think about the credit risk and what does it mean for a validator to be credit worthy, realistically, um, it's whether or not there is collateral in that validator. And so if you have any derivative or any token, as we like to say now, um, that's derived from the value of the validator, the credit worthiness of that asset is derived from whether or not there's capital in that validator. The current methodologies of underwriting credit risk in DeFi are built on the assumption that we have to underwrite basis risk, which is based on liquidity, price volatility, so on and so forth. But the question we should ask ourselves is, does this really make sense for staked and restaked assets? Should we really be thinking about how we underwrite validators and the credit risk of validators themselves? The second idea is this idea of utilization as a function of consensus. So when we think about um, traditional lending markets as well, when, and when we say the term utilization, utilization is usually a function of how many borrowed assets are within a pool. Um, and you know, the higher the utilization is of that pool, the higher your interest rate. Because inherently, uh, you want to incentivize um, liquidity to flow to other parts of that market. Well, in this characteristic of this idea of like utilization as a function of, of consensus, we can actually kind of flip the definition of what does utilization mean. And you can imagine in restaking protocols, utilization may mean a function of how many validators or how much collateral you're actually using in a restaking protocol in Ethereum holistically, and changing interest rates um, as a product of how much systemic risk you're actually introducing into the system. So that way you actually positively incentivize users who want more yield and more econ better economic outcomes in middleware or other protocols that are not utilizing as much consensus. And to move on to kind of trustless middleware and, and validator products, when we tap into these, are, there are three that I think are, are really large or really or it could be really prominent in specifically the restaking uh, narrative, one of which is the idea of TEEs or trusted execution environments like Intel SGX for, tr uh, for trustless signing. Um, many instances of slashing uh, occur as a byproduct of operator error, but if we abstract away key ownership and have this idea of actually storing keys within these trusted execution environments, we can take a step back from um, this idea of focusing on operator error and instead positively incentivize validators and middleware that focus on dependencies on these structural execution environments to enable better lending outcomes for them as well. Multi-prover middleware is another example. All middleware have to report essentially slashable events back up to whatever uh, kind of execution environment is executing that slashing. And I, the idea that social consensus only has to sit in the global base layer of Ethereum, but instead doesn't, can't be pushed up to potentially middleware and the idea of creating multi-prover systems that are not only dependent on uh, ZK, like automated ZK proofs, but instead maybe quorums of uh, DAO votes or optimistic provers, um, I think is a mistake and many people and many middleware in the future could be positively economically incentivized to build this infrastructure. And finally, the last one is credible commits for consensus layer state. Historically, it's been really difficult to introduce complexity into DeFi primitives without sacrificing on trustlessness. But validators themselves are essentially data points that are construed out of consensus, meaning effectively the data itself is trustless, um, thereby creating a credible commitment infrastructure, the idea of like ZK Merkle inclusion proofs, or uh, the idea of uh, building like ZKML models specifically optimized for underwriting validator credit risk are things um, that can be built on the basis that validator data in and of itself is derived through consensus and is primarily trustless. We simply have to build um, the infrastructure to port that trustless data over between state environments. And this goes to say that, you know, at the end of the day, the commodification of this idea of security is inevitable. Inherently, it just creates better economic outcomes for middleware because for middleware, it's a lot cheaper uh, to use something like Eigenlayer or like VoxSwap Cloud um, than it is to bootstrap your own validator network. The thing that we need to focus on kind of as an ecosystem, as a community, and, and especially I, uh, I'd like to see this more in DeFi founders is rethinking how we think about credit risk, how we define what is um, credit worthy, how we define, oh, uh, 
capital efficiency and how we promote uh, these things that we really um, want to promote for users and for kind of these performance metrics that people focus on um, in all the primitives that have product market fit now will define whether or not this idea of the commodification for security will really tarnish or impact negatively impact um, kind of the social consensus um, that we have kind of built um, on the Ethereum base layer. And really, that's the idea behind kind of what we work on at, at ION. Um, the idea is to build better economic outcomes by analyzing validator credit risk. Essentially, uh, the focus is to um, underwrite and build trustless systems to actually score and um, build credit risk profiles for various different validators. And you can actually build financial primitives on top of this. So the idea of, and I was talking to actually Matt yesterday about this, um, Allowing uh, users who can verify, or allowing validators who can verifiably commit um, that they're uh, running their keys in a trust execution environment, you can enable better um, capital efficiency for um, loans backed by those assets, which at the same time both promotes um, capital efficiency for users while also promoting trustlessness for um, your underlying infrastructure. And so, that's essentially uh, kind of what we think about uh, when it comes to aligning DeFi or aligning restaking by a DeFi and trustless infrastructure. If you want to chat more about this, feel free to ping me or um, any of the folks at the team uh, via Ion Protocol, uh, and we can chat more about aligning DeFi and restaking for the future. But yeah, thank you. Um, I'll take any immediate questions, and then uh, I can pass it off. Fantastic. We'll get it moving. Oh, yes. What is your question, Matt? Plug into to the restaking uh, platforms like cloud, blockchain cloud, or like in there, really deliver the value to the, the non runners and solo stakers, especially. Yeah, exactly. So, anyone who essentially is operating or depositing into BlockSwap Cloud or any other kind of restaking platform. Um, can essentially use ION as like a router to that, those deposits and then mint out a representative asset, um, like a credit asset um, denominated in ETH that you can then go use in the greater ecosystem. So essentially the buck doesn't stop with restaking. Just because you're restaking doesn't mean you're isolated to only the financial opportunities of restaking, but we essentially underwrite that credit risk of you restaking and saying, okay, we'll allow you to also use that capital and we'll mint a synthetic representation of it for you to go use in the greater ecosystem. Yeah, no problem.